Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's Brood. find Mama and the two girls. They're discussing a newfound friend of Papa's, and Yetta says... That's a nice-looking man Papa's with tonight. I should say he is. Did you notice the suit he had on? Fitted him like a glove, didn't it? Yeah, and that ring on his little finger. Wasn't that gorgeous? I bet it was four carats. Yeah, and that diamond he had in his tie was no slouch either. I think that stone was bigger than the ring. Even. Oh, I don't. I think the ring was bigger, don't you, Ma? I didn't like his eyes. What's the matter with his eyes? When he talks to you, he looks someplace else. Such a kind of fellow I don't like. Well, now, I don't see why you don't like him. He raved about everything we had for dinner. He he told you yours was the best cooking he ever tasted. He wants to do business with Papa. He has to like my cooking. What does he want with Papa? What do you think he wants? Money. How do you know? Anytime a man is extra nice, he wants something. But he said it was a great chance for Papa. When you're giving away bargains, you don't have to be so nice. I bet he has plenty of money. I never saw such big diamonds. Hmm. <laughs> the biggest diamonds go with the emptiest pockets. I don't see how you figure that out. Yet, uh, when a man's got in the bank money, he don't have to wear fancy clothes and diamond rings. It's only when he's got nothing, he has to get his clothes to tell a lie for him. He has such nice manners. Look how nice he was to Papa. When a spider's making eyes at a fly, he's so polite, the butter wouldn't melt in his face. Well, you didn't like him the minute he came in. I didn't like him before he came in. Now, I don't see how you can take a dislike to a person the minute you see him. Darling, it's female ignition. The minute I saw him, I knew whatever he wants, Papa shouldn't give it to him. Besides, he talks too good. He knows too many long voices. What difference does that make, Ma? Oh, Sarah, when a man is selling you something that's a genuine bargain, he uses short voice, so you know what he's talking about. But when he's selling you something that's no good, then he has to use long voice, so you'll be so busy trying to figure out the voids, you won't find out what he's trying to sell you. Well, I know what he's trying to sell, Papa. Sure, so do I. He has a very fine gold mine, and he's willing to let Papa in on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. If Papa goes in on the ground floor, he'll go out in the alley. But it's a very fine mine. There's gold there just waiting to be picked up. If there's gold there, why don't he pick it up and not bother Papa? Oh, you don't understand, Ma. They have to buy machinery. Machinery to pick up gold? What's the matter? Is he too lazy to stoop down? Oh, don't you see, Ma? They have to dig the gold out of the ground. Then they run it through the machine, and the gold comes out of one side and the rocks out of the other. Mm. I'll bet he'll give Papa the side with the rocks. Oh, he can't do that. It's a corporation. I thought it was a gold mine. Oh. Mama, the trouble with you is that you're too suspicious. Darling, 43 years I lived in this world, and one thing I learned. For nothing, you get nothing. Anytime somebody gives away something, it's got a hole in it. Besides, Papa is a knee pants manufacturer, not a gold catcher. A shoemaker should stick to his hand. To his last, Mother, not to his end. Last end, it don't matter. But Papa bought that apartment building, and he doesn't know anything about real estate. That's different. You buy a building, you go and look, and there it is. You buy a gold mine, and where is it? It's in Australia. Sure, he showed Papa the map. You saw it yourself. Maps, maps. What do I know about maps? Am I a geography? No, but you can read a map, can't you? Here, look. This is Australia. Mm-hmm. So it's Australia. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Here in the middle, D-E-S-E-R-T. 
Desert? What kind of map is this? Desert like a dinner? This is a crazy map. Oh, that's desert, Mother. The whole middle of Australia is a desert. Uh, what is this blue business around here? That's water, Ma. All water. Then where comes Germany and the water? And where is Vienna and what became of Poland? Germany and Vienna and Poland? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what the trouble is. Ma's thinking of Austria. Oh, Didn't sure. you say Austria? <laughs> no, we said Australia. Yeah. Put the map away. Before I looked at it, I didn't know anything at all about it. And since you explained it to me, I know less. Well, the very fact you can't read a map has nothing to do with a gold mine. This man came here, he, he was sent to Papa by a friend of his, and, and he offers Papa a big chance to make a lot of money, and, well, I think if Papa's smart, he'll grab the opportunity. He's a nice fellow, too. Sure, didn't you hear him tell Papa that a year from today, this stock will be worth ten times the money he paid for it? Sure, I heard him. Didn't you see the samples of the gold ore he had? Yes. Well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Well, you don't think everybody's dishonest, do you? No, darling, most people, he's honest. Then why do you suspect this man? Just because most people are honest. That's why I suspect him. I don't get it. Every year since we was married, people come to your papa with prepositions. Honest people who really need money for a legitimate reason. Sometimes they offer him 5%, sometimes 6 or 7 Maybe once in a while, 8 That's all. This man, he's got it a preposition where he offers 100%. So he's entirely different from the others. So if the others are honest and he's entirely different, he must be dishonest. I think you're entirely wrong, Mom. That could be, too. Oh, Miss Papa. Hello, Jake. Hello. Hello, Papa. Hello, Hello, Hello. Hello. The hell did he come back here? No, but he'll be here. How do you know he'll be here? Say, for $10,000, you can make two visits. That's more than a doctor gets, even a specialist. But what does he got to do with doctors? He's the same as a doctor. He's a surgeon. Oh, you mean a surgeon. I thought a surgeon was a fellow in the army like a general, only lower. <laughs> That's a sergeant. Surgeon's the correct word, Ma. Well, how can you compare him to a surgeon? He's even higher priced than a surgeon. A surgeon takes off your tonsils, he gets $200. This man takes off your pocketbook, he gets $10,000. Not me, you're talking and you know nothing. What do you know about gold mines? Nothing, darling. I wouldn't know a gold mine if it was growing right in my backyard. You see, you see, you know nothing about it. Say, if you told me all you know about it, Jake, I'd still know nothing. Joe Manischewitz is buying and is he a fool? Well, I'm asking you, is he a fool? About Joe Manischewitz, I know nothing. If he wants to give away his money, it wouldn't take one noodle out of mine soup. But if you give away your money, it's a white horse of another color. Uh, Mama, 16 years I've been in the knee pants business, and I'm still a poor man. I've worked like a dog all day long. Don't I? Yeah, you do, Jake. You're a hard worker. You bet your life I worked from morning to night. I'm planning and scheming, and still I don't get rich. Now comes a chance for me to make a lot of money, and what are you doing? Don't tell me. I'll answer. You're discouraging me. Jake, listen. 16 years you've been in our business. A good business. You've worked hard. Mm, you bet your life. You know the business, don't you? I should say I do. All right, then. If in 16 years with hard work and a good reputation, you can't become rich in our business you know, how can you suddenly become rich in a business you don't know? But, Mama, look how much gold is used. I know. Even teeth is full of it. It's a better business than knee pants. Then why does anybody go in the knee pants business? Why doesn't everybody be a gold miner? But everybody can be a gold miner. All right, then. Somebody has to make knee pants, ain't it? Of course, of course. All right, then. You make knee pants. Oh, there's no use talking. Pa, you know how Ma is when she makes up her mind. She doesn't understand this, that's all. If you had listened to the man, Mama, when he was explaining, you would understand perfectly that you can't help but make money. Jake. I didn't like his eyes. You didn't like... What kind of a reason is that? You didn't like his eyes. Sue me. I didn't like his eyes. What kind of eyes must a gold man have got? Is it a special brand? Jake, there's no use talking. Look, am I trying to do you a hoit? No, no. Then as a favor personal to me, please don't buy from him gold stock. But why not? I'm asking you, don't buy it. Becky, if you would only listen to the man. P.J. Morton, a big oil man, he bought it. And Lee Foreman, the big broker, he bought it. And Joe Manischewitz and Henry Kane, the biggest banker in St. Louis, bought thousands of dollars worth. And if it's good enough for them, why shouldn't I invest my money? Don't buy. He showed me a letter from the mayor of one of the biggest towns in Australia, where it says that he has seen this gold mine and he thinks it's the best mine in the entire country. Do you know this mayor? How do I know? Of course I don't. How do you know he wrote the letter then? Oh, but, Mama, he wouldn't do a thing like Why that. Why not? For $10,000, I'd write letters till my knuckles hurt. Mama, you know what? You're suspicious. <laughs> For $10,000, I can be a little suspicious. That's no use talking. The man is coming back in a minute, and when he comes back, I'm buying for him the gold mine stock. 
Do me one favor, Jake, will you please? What do you want now? Let me talk to him. What are you going to ask him? I don't know. I'll ask him questions. And then you'll know what? For five minutes, I want to talk to him. What can it hurt? What can it do good? I've already made up my mind, Mom. I'm going to buy it. Then you'll sure to let me talk, eh? Uh, all right, all right. If it'll make you any happier, talk, talk. But I tell you right now, no matter what you say, I'm going to buy. Let me talk for five minutes, Jake, and I'll promise you that after I talk with him... If you still want to buy, you'll buy. Ah, uh, here he is now. I'll answer the door. Before you answer, Jake, promise You're me. You're driving me crazy. Promise me. All right, all right. Let him in. Yes, just a minute, just a... Ah, step right in, Mr. Sterling. Step right in. Uh, Mr. Sterling, my, uh, my wife would like to ask you something. Well, I'm always glad to advise the ladies. How do you do, Mrs. Blue? How do you do, Mr. Sterling? <laughs> Take a seat. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, if there's anything I can explain to you, I'll be very happy to do it. Uh, you are a gold miner yourself, Mr. Sterling? Oh, yes, yes, of course, sir. Your hands look awful soft for a miner. Oh, my dear Mrs. Bloom, I'm, I'm not exactly a miner in the sense of the word. Oh, uh, well, what sense of the word are you a miner? Well, I've always looked uh, look after the financial end, etc. Etc.? Mm. Etc. in a gold mine? Well, I mean, and so forth. Oh, then you're not really a practical miner. I mean, you didn't dig this gold hexual. And you yourself, personal, couldn't tell if in this hole is more gold underneath, eh? <laughs> I see what you're driving at, Mrs. Blumen. A very good point you brought up, too. <clears throat> what you mean is I, I would hardly be competent to make a reliable survey of what the future of this mine will be. Ah, uh, yeah. I think like that would have to come from our hacks, boy. Very well put, Mrs. Bloom. <clears throat> Uh, here is the letter from the expert now. Now, look it over. This firm is unquestionably the best in its line, and you see what they say about the mine, and you know how conservative these experts are. Oh, for my husband, I wouldn't bother you, uh, Mr. Sterling. He's going to buy. Uh, but if it's such a good preposition, I would like to invest $10,000 of my own money. Well, 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 I'll be happy to accommodate you. But Mama, from there have you got money? Do I tell you everything, Jack? Mr. Sterling, uh, mine glasses are in the other room. Is the name from these hex points Cord and Sutherland? Yes, ma'am, Cord and Sutherland of <coughs> Sydney, Australia. Isn't that a funny thing? Mm. <laughs> mine cousin, Sarah Lefkovich, works by them. Uh, you mean she works for them? Sure, ain't it lucky? Look, I'm going to send her a cable and ask her exactly what to do. Uh. It ain't for mine husband, Mr. Sterling, it's for me. Uh. And I'll tell her exactly how hard you're working to raise money for this mine. Uh. She's uh. an awful nice girl. Her brother is our big police detective there. Uh. I, I, I'm afraid I have to rush away. I, I have uh, an appointment. Oh, yeah, but you'll leave your address so we can call you the minute the cable yes, comes I, back. I'm leaving town in the morning. I'll, I'll get in touch with you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I... Uh, Becky, I know now he was a faker, but how could you know? I didn't like his eyes. Yes, but ain't it lucky your cousin just happened to work for this firm? What cousin? Your cousin, Sarah Lefkovich, in Australia. I ain't even got a cousin, Sarah Lefkovich. Uh -huh.